Hello everybody, welcome back to uh, part two of the bubble uh, Miller send uh, tutorial I've been doing on how to send transactional, transactional emails from bubble to Miller send. This is part two, we already had uh, part one. Uh, make sure you go watch, watch part one uh, if you haven't seen that one yet. But we are at the part where we're going to construct the body in the API connector for bubble to send the payload over to Miller send that will be received by a template. Uh, so we'll create a template in Miller Send and that will, uh, it will uh, receive that payload and send that email on to the end user when they sign up. So we're creating a welcome email that gets sent to the end user when they sign up to your application. So let's first go to Miller Send and if you remember here in the API documents, uh, we, we grabbed the API endpoint here and we already put that in up here, right here, um, or excuse me, right there. So we've got this all set up already. We did that in the last video, uh, but now we need the request body. So uh, we're gonna create a template. This is an example request body here, but we're gonna create the template that we're gonna use. And then I've actually got a payload already constructed with the information I need for my application that I'll copy and paste in there. Uh, but it's very similar to, to what you'll be doing, um, but this will just make it faster for the sake of the tutorial. So let's create this template. And I typically just use the drag and drop editor. Uh, so we'll, we'll choose that. This allows you a little more freedom to do more customized type stuff. It's a little more advanced probably, but I typically just do this out the gate, especially if you're just validating a product uh, to get off the ground. Um, let's see here. So let's look at all. I want to do all templates and I just want the uh, welcome template that they have. There it is right there. I'm just going to use this little generic welcome. So I'll choose that. It will then pull it up into their rich, uh, their drag and drop editor and we'll be able to manipulate anything we want. The logo, the colors, the, how it reads, the what's getting passed in as far as dynamic variables being passed in. I'm not gonna do any of that right now. I'm just gonna only set up the email address of the user signing up, because we're not, typically this would say, welcome, John. Well, I'm not capturing in our signup flow any other th anything other than their email address. So I'm just gonna pass this email address so when they click create uh, create account, it's going to pass this email address through the API connector over to the Mellersend template, right? Um, so let's um, let's just change this to be more in line with what it is. I'm going to say this is the user's email, so user email. So the brackets with the dollar sign this denotes what's being passed into this template. So it's just an inline editor. They made it real easy here. So we're, we're gonna use this parameter value here, uh, not value, but parameter key to pass in a value, which would be the user that just clicked signed up, right? So it'll say welcome Neil Pierce at me.com, welcome Steve at gmail.com, whoever signed up. So you can edit all this stuff, change colors. Uh, I don't need this dynamic value here, so I'm just gonna put interfaces team. I don't need this to be dynamic either, so I'll just do hello at interfaces-ui.com. And that's good for now, but you'll wanna spend more time putting your logo and colors and things like that on here and whatever you want it to say. So I'm gonna save and publish that. Um, just for the sake of this um, tutorial. So if you go back to the API documentation, you scroll down a little bit, it tells you what's required. They have all these different things that you can put in here. You can do HTML, text, you can pass in all sorts of different things. Uh, but they do have fields that are required in that payload to go to Mellersend for it to work. So you can see the from email address, it is required. The uh, from.email, uh, you don't need this because we're gonna use a template ID, but if you didn't have a template ID, you would need this JSON parameter here. Um, it looks like it's not required, the from is not required either uh, if, a template I, if a template ID is present and the defaults are set, and I'll show you that. But you could go through this list in their documentation. If you're getting errors, it's probably because 
there's a required field like two. It's got to have the two email address or it won't know where to go to. So this is required regardless. Uh, so just get familiar with that. Um, I typically, I'll rename this to welcome email. And I typically like to use sometimes the default settings. So this text will be displayed in the subject field in your recipient's email clients. Um, I'm adding that in as a variable in my payload, but if you put these values in, you won't need to have that. So the from, if you put this in here, you won't need to add this in the payload. But I'm just, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna add everything in the payload. So you can set these defaults. I typically do that, but I wanted to show you the structure of the payload without these defaults uh, being set. So they give you the payload that needs to be used right here to put into your um, to put into your uh, Bubble API connector body uh, of that call. But I actually constructed one myself. Uh, that's already got my stuff typed in so just to make it faster. So I kind of just changed some of this stuff So I'm gonna copy my payload That I constructed and I'm gonna paste that right into the body here. So I've already got my from email address uh, So remember you don't have to have this if it's set in your defaults. That's what Miller sin says you do have to it is required to have the two uh, The subject if that's set in your defaults, you don't need that um, and then the variables are basically in the the all this down here these key value pairs are, are data that you can add in to pass so if you had three fields you're capturing you could pass those into this email as well we're only capturing the email so I don't need anything more than this um, if you're not familiar with dynamic values in the body here bubble asks that you use these brackets which you see I've done here bracket I just made up this two email uh, key close bracket same thing down here uh, you've got to put that also in this variable place. Exact same thing as here. It's just how Miller Sin likes it. This user email variable that I set up in here, this dynamic data that I've set up here, corresponds with the template. You can see I've got that same thing here, right? That's where I typed in that user email on that dollar sign, bracket dollar sign, user email, close bracket. So that's where we're passing in that email. Um, what we need is the template ID now. You can get it in the body or you can get it up here as well. So I'll copy this and I'll go back and I'll replace this ID from my example. And uh, that just tells uh, Miller Send which template to use with this payload, where to send that data. So we can uncheck private on these two, uh, two deals here. Um, the two email, we're just going to do Neil Pierce at me. That's my personal email address. That's who it's going to. That's the person that's going to be signed up. And then the user email, this would typically be like name, the user's name. But since I don't have that field, I'm just going to put my same email address in here, me.com. And then that should do it. So when I re initialize this call, it's going to send that email. Now, if you don't get any errors, then you can you can expect that it initialize and set the email. Now, if you notice, when I initialize this, it didn't return back anything because MillerSend doesn't, by default, return a response back. So when you hit their, you do a post call to them, you send that data, a lot of times you'll get a response back and then you can go in and select, oh, which field you want in Bubble and all that. Well, since this is just sending posting data, they're not sending a response back by default. Um, so that did initialize. Now, if you get any errors, you'll need to fix those errors. Um, so let's pull up my email. See, so I've got the email just came through and that's where I passed in my email address where it typically would say, welcome Neil, not my email address. And then that's kind of how that works right there. That's in a nutshell how it works, but you're going to want to click around and understand this. I mean, you, in the template, you get a preview of it. I mean, you can look at the text value of it. Um, you could do different things in here. This is all the different, like if you were coding this out, they give you all the, all the calls and the, and the, the, the parameters you need. But I just use the, usually the curl or the CURL to do that. Um, so that's pretty easy. That's a very basic setup. 
but that kind of gets you going on your integration. Um, the other thing in Millersyn is they provide you this activity. Um, oh, let me let's save changes here. They give you this activity over here. They have some cool settings where you can see where, you know, the, the email got queued up here, then it got sent, then it got delivered, and then opened. That's where I opened up the email. So it's got some really cool tracking and stuff, and they've been adding some analytics in here where you can see, you know, how many have been processed, delivered, rejected. It's really good. It's, it's, it's pretty user-friendly. Uh, a lot of times the error log is, it can provide some good uh, information as well. Um, but most of the time you're going to live kind of up in this, this area here. Um, now, when, in the first video, I was showing you when, when we were waiting for approval, they approved my account very fast today. It took maybe 10 minutes. Matter of fact, they rejected it once because I didn't give them enough information uh, about the business. I just added a little more information, resubmitted it, and then they approved it. Um, a uh, key takeaway here, you only get up to 100 emails per month for free until you upgrade to their free tier, then you'll get 12,000 emails per month. And when you, the reason why they want you to upgrade, it's like, okay, well, why, how am I, if I'm upgrading, why wouldn't I be paying? Well, you actually, they want to get your credit card information on file, I think, and then that way they have your information and then when you need to upgrade to a, a paid plan, it's already sitting there and you can easily do that. But if you click this upgrade, choose the free tier, you'll get 12,000 free. You'll have to put your credit card in, but you'll still get the 12,000 free emails. You will be on that free tier. You're gonna wanna do this immediately because you'll run through those 100 emails pretty quick. And if you have users, and you hit that, it's going to stop sending emails to your users. So I just experienced this not too long ago. So just get in the habit of upgrading to their free tier that allows 12,000 12, emails, which in my opinion is very generous. Um, so I'm not gonna do that now for the sake of this tutorial because I just have to put in my credit card information. You'll notice that they also have SMS. They just added this. I'm gonna be doing probably a video on that as well. I haven't used it yet, but I'm gonna do this as well. It's where you can send actual SMS messages to your users, same as email, just going to their cell phones. Um, they have some different guidelines for that because the I think the regulations around sending uh, text messages is probably maybe a little more stricter, I'm not sure. But anyways, I'm gonna test that out. And if you guys want a video uh, how to on how to do that, I'll do that too. It looks like the payloads and, and the setup are pretty much the same slightly different because it's going to a phone number um, but just come in here and get familiar with it uh, if you have any questions ping me you know dm me on twitter or shoot me an email or something like that um, let's go back over to bubble and we made these dynamic fields here right so let's go ahead and set up the workflow so on click I typically like to set this up as a back-end workflow that way it doesn't slow down the user, uh, you know, getting signed up and then it redirecting to the, the homepage of your application. So what I'll do is I'll set this up as a back-end workflow. So let's go to, oh, do I not have API turned on here? I guess I don't. Let's go to settings and let's go to API and let's make sure we have uh, enabled API workflows enabled. And then let's go back to there and then let's go to your backend workflows and let's just add a new API workflow. So let's just call this um, send welcome email. And we don't wanna make this public cause we're just sending it from our system. And then right now we'll just do can be ran without authentication and ignore privacy rules. Um, we're gonna wanna pass that email through. Um, that we're capturing that dynamic email. So let's just call this email as the key. And then a lot of times you'll make this a user, but since we're just sending through the text, the email of the text, you just keep this a text field right here. And what we'll do is we will do an action and we will do a, uh, let's see, plugins. And then we will do our, this is from our API connector. So mail send, send welcome email. That's that call we created over in the plugin API connector. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna, this is going to go to 
the uh, user that just signed up. So we can actually grab probably current user. I'm gonna probably use the, well, it is a variable. So we're gonna pass through that email through to that variable. And then the body user email that we're sending through, this is typically gonna be the name. Remember, welcome Neil, not the email address. Um, so we would typically dynamically pass that through as well. We'll just leave that hard coded for now. And then let's go back to the design. And excuse me, let's do, uh, oops, sorry about that. On click, we're gonna start a workflow. So I've already got my stuff signed up here. So we're just gonna add another uh, workflow action here. We're gonna, we're gonna do a schedule a API workflow. We're gonna schedule that one that we just created on the back end. We're gonna fire it off immediately, so current date and time. And then the email we're gonna pass through, I'm just gonna take it from that sign up form. So it will be um, input sign up email. Again, probably just gonna capture the username or something else. And then we need to move this, we've got an error up here because when you navigate pages, we need to move this back and make that the last action. So that should work right there. Um, Let's go ahead and preview. Let's take off the debugger. And let's pretend like I don't have an account. We'll do a new account. We'll do a new test. Um, test, test. Create account. And that should have sent an email to me. It may take a little bit longer to get in here. Um, let's see here. Let's see, we don't need to see all those in my day job emails, so we don't need to see all that. Um, it really takes longer to come through on my work email because we have a lot more spam filters in place, but let's see, make sure it didn't go to junk. Let's see here. It should have went. Let's go look at the activity, see if it got sent. It says it was delivered. So it queued it, processed it, queued it up, sent it, and deliver. It says it's delivered. So let's see here. Sometimes it just, oh, there it is. I think it, I think it made it. And there it is. And I've hard coded that value. Remember, that should just be nil. So, but that worked. That, that worked. So pretty seamless. Um, let's see. I open that let's make sure it opens and then if you go back to Meller send and you refresh this it should show opened clicked oh it also shows clicked opened so yeah that worked uh, perfectly so that's kind of it for this tutorial I'll go probably in more depth with some of these other features eventually like the um, maybe going over the suppressions um, domains a little bit more and then the validation tool they have where you can do some validation stuff or email verification stuff <clears throat> to check if emails are safe i'll probably dive into some of that but this gets you kind of out the gate and going so i hope you guys um i hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial if you have any questions ping me right here at neil pierce at me.com dm me on twitter if you want um, but I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I can try to go more granular if I need to. Um, this is where you're probably going to spend most of your time just figuring out your parameters and stuff that you need for your specific use case. And again, I hope to go over the SMS feature soon and all that. So hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, be safe and we'll see you in the next video.